Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John. This report is for the 25th of October. And we'll go right to the charts here. As we can see, we expected uh, continued long bias with the rising shakeout as well as our dip below the um, red line here with the orange under the DOC red right here. And then we ended up with the steel dipping below. That was our long signal during this flat period. And sure enough, we broke out. Our target expectation was up there around the 2154 range. I haven't quite reached that yet. You can see shorts reactivating in here, uh, thinking, okay, we'll attack that uh, peak again. Uh, but at the same time, you have short-term buyers and long-term buyers. We're about to break into a new zone here. And um, you get below that 7.5, and we should expect to see that uh, reached. Uh, at the same time, let's take a look at our daily. Um, well, let me go put it, I run two at the same time for diversity. So we had a predator hawk that took place 21.21 and closed out just the other day, 21.45 for a nice 20 plus point ES gain. Um, you can look at the performance report. Not bad. Uh, I don't think we're at the highs yet, though. We're pretty close right back to it. Uh, we had a peak, and we'll draw down there. Normal inclination. And that's where it is for the year so far. Not bad. Isn't that super spectacular? Now, we have a blind hawk. Now, that's an interesting one. Uh, also has to do with the um, rising red with the cyan pivot. And um, so that puts a new signal. So same predator hawk took place. Same close up, but then it took the buy at this particular level as well, which makes sense to us since we still have a buy signal. So, all things being equal, not bad, right on par. The NQ, like we mentioned, way outperforming, makes the new highs like we said it would based on what our expectation was from it. And if I put that ES back up there, you can clearly see the differences. I mean, we're not anywhere near it with the ES. Uh, we didn't even break out of the ABM range where you can clearly see that we did, um, which was the expectation for targets uh, for the NQ. And then the Dow is going to be lagging behind as well. So still we have the disparity where the NASDAQ is outperforming everything. Euro down at the bottom, uh, still getting ugly with that um, shakeout readings, but slightly improved from the extreme histogram, uh, but could dip back below the red line here very quickly. So we'll be looking to see if that's basing at all. Still expecting a little lower from it. TLT, we didn't expect anything out of that pump, um, particularly since we didn't get the steel coming down below the red to give us a trigger on that dip below. Um, DOC red with the orange. See what happens when it fails. It just doesn't uh, produce anything. In fact, um, I think that was significant to point out because typically what we need is that steel coming down and it didn't happen and that's what you get. Um, in fact, we had a similar thing with, um, well, I think uh, we'll be able to see it on intraday chart coming up. USO, still looking good with that uh, brief flipping back and forth. Likewise, here we go, same situation, gold. No dip of the steel yet, and even though you had the uh, start of what should have been by signal, just can't sustain itself, and that's usually a good cursor to uh, point things out indirectly. Uh, we can see the dip below the red line with the cyan, which is always bullish, and it led to a bullish run, but right here, here's what uh, also took place. So, orange dips below red, but now red's well above that 13.5, so you've already uh, have an extended move, and then boom, right here, um, you get the steel dipping back below, at the same time, red uh, breaks into the new zone and it just left kind of flat because you're already at the warning sign and the problem with that signal though is right down here at the extreme uh, almost positive at uh, negative 07 so it didn't meet the steel criteria everything else was good but the extreme right here uh, being too high and you can see what happened we just ended up with a slight flat it was still bullish because you're underneath the uh, red with the cyan which is always bullish at that particular point so uh, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Nothing too dramatic with any of that. And then from a 5K standpoint, we had our buy signals from way back over there. And then we ended up with our periodic move. But most of the time was spent uh, with the red, uh, the cyan underneath the red, which beautifully. And then we had positive extremes. And so all we did was backfill 
good portion of those. You just don't look for the breakout one. It's usually the next one over, which would have been right here. And that's exactly what we filled out. So all in all, I think did exactly what we expected and we're poised to still reach that um, 54 number. What was our high range up here? It was uh, 49. Pretty darn close to it, just not quite. And it just teases it a little bit. Um, nothing out of the ordinary though. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, like I said, uh, the bullish expectations, as long as uh, you know HRC has got a clear lock on things, that's the way things are going to go. Should we start to see some uh, major adjustment in polls, then yeah, we'll talk about that there. You're going to see it in the market first. Uh, but at this particular point, I think people are pretty comfortable with what their expectation is. Um, and regardless, uh, even after. If there was some kind of change, uh, the bias is still going to be uh, overall to the upside. But getting close back to that uh, 2150 uh, level that we were looking at, and I would expect we need some base there until we have uh, an indication. Uh, and I think that's going to take place after the election. It's not going to happen before unless it becomes super obvious. Uh, and for, I think, the market, uh, they're declaring that it's already super obvious. So. Got to go where the money is at this particular point until that changes. As always, though, look for me on the Skype chat. Trade well.